And now let's shift our focus to the Sudan. It's a sub-Saharan African nation of 48 million people. It's been under military rule for decades. It has rival armed groups fighting each other. And now the factionalism has led to bloodshed. Intense fighting is on in the Sudan. Almost 100 people have been killed. And this includes at least one Indian national. More than 1,100 people have been injured. The army is conducting airstrikes in the Sudanese capital of Khartoum. Earlier explosions rocked the Khartoum airport. Smoke was seen billowing from the site. Sudan's capital is under siege. Listen to what eyewitnesses have to say. I was asleep. Suddenly, I heard a lot of big sounds, uh, like bullets, rockets. I don't know what is it. I can't leave the house. It's very dangerous outside. Uh, the, the military is everywhere. I don't know who, who, who are they. It's miserable. I can't imagine what, what, what's going to happen if I leave our, my home. A lot of people, they are going by walking. They are going with their bags. Many of the people, they are loading the stuff from supermarket. They are going in their car. And many of them, they were hitchhiking in another vehicles to escape the city. To understand what's going on, let's take a step back to see how it all started. Sudan gained independence from the British and the Egyptians in the year 1956. This country has been governed by both nations, the Brits and the Egyptians, together before 1956. And since independence, the Sudan has seen several military dictatorships. The longest was under Field Marshal Omar al-Bashir. He reigned from 1989 to 2019. That's when he was deposed and incarcerated in 2019. And presently, the country is under the thumb of a man called Abdel Fateh al-Burhan, another military ruler. He's the chairman of a so-called Transitional Sovereignty Council. Burhan made his bones in the Second Sudanese Civil War between 1983 and 2005, and also in the Darfur conflict. You see, the Sudan is no stranger to internal violence, especially in the southwestern Darfur region. It has seen armed groups clash with government forces since the year 2003. The rebels accused Sudan's government, Arab government, of ethnic cleansing. So the non-Arab population took up arms. Sudan's military, under officers like Burhan, fought the rebels. But it wasn't just the military. Pro-government armed groups also fought the non-Arabs. And the conflict in Darfur gave birth to powerful warlords. They had their own private armies. One of these was called the Janjaweed Militia. Their leader was a man called Muhammad Hamdan Dagalo, also known as Hemeti. The word Janjaweed has been translated to English as devils on horseback. It was reportedly one of the most brutal groups in the Sudan. The US says they killed anywhere between 200 to 400,000 people. And this was just in three years, from 2003 to 2006. The UN Security Council called for the Janjaweed militia to be disarmed. That did not happen. But in 2013, they were rebranded. Since then, they've been called the Rapid Support Forces, RSF. It's a, it officially became a paramilitary group. And it came under the nominal leadership of the Sudanese government. But that's all an eyewash. It's an armed group of over 100,000 soldiers. They report directly to their leader, Hemeti. And that's where today's problems began. The Sudan's current ruler, Burhan, has been looking at how to transition into a democratic government. And if they do, when they do, what happens to the paramilitary groups like RSF? How will they be integrated into Sudan's armed forces? Who will lead them after the merger? Hemeti, it seems, did not want to wait to find out. His troops started deploying around the country last week and clashes between the RSF and Sudan's military began on Saturday. Now leaders around the world are calling for a ceasefire. The Arab League, for one, held an emergency session yesterday to call for peace. My country's delegation urges all Sudanese parties to immediately cease all armed clashes to prevent loss of life and ensure the safety and security of civilians, as well as preserve the potential of the Sudanese people. We caution against the danger of escalating violence in Sudan and the unpredictable consequences that may ensue, both domestically and regionally. The African Union's peace and security body also met to discuss the Sudan. This is what the US and the UK said from a G7 meeting in Japan. There is a shared deep concern 
uh, about the fighting, uh, the violence that's going on in Sudan, the threat that that poses to civilians, that it poses to the Sudanese nation, and potentially poses even to, uh, to the region. Um, there's also a very uh, strongly shared view about the need for Generals Burhan and Hamedi to ensure the protection of uh, civilians and non-combatants, uh, as well as people from uh, third countries, including uh, our personnel who are located in Sudan. But I echo the points that have been uh, made already by Secretary Blinken, that we call upon an immediate cessation of violence, a return to the talks, talks which seem to be heading in the direction of uh, civilian government, and of course that is the ultimate desired uh, outcome. The Sudan has asked international forces to not interfere. Both the army and the RSF say they have the upper hand. As the warlords trade fire, it's the people who are once again fearing for their lives. And in these power games, the biggest loser is the prospect of a peaceful, democratic Sudan.